Hey boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dump Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1955 Mercury running. Way to pick this thing up. I was diddling around on my phone on the Facebook Marketplace this morning. This thing's about an hour from home. Look like a screaming deal. We haven't had a Mercury yet, maybe? I don't know. Basically, it's a Ford with some fancy trim work. Ain't it duff? It's got some old license plates on it. Looks like it was last run in, I don't know, the 90s. Looks like it was a barn find. I don't know what it's going to be like when we're going to get there, but we already committed to buying it. Everybody else wanted to buy it. It was such a good deal. So I said we will take it So Let's go load this thing up Let's See if we can't get it running again for the first time in 30-ish years You want to drive? That'd be great Well, we made it home with the old 55 Merc here. Looks like it was last tagged in 93. This thing doesn't roll because none of the tires are going to take care. So we're going to resolve that real quick because you know how much I love vehicles that don't roll. You guys know me, I'm not much for uh, pressure washing, but this has been the uh, super clean shirt that I got on. This is an old shirt. These guys were like the first people to ever reach out to me when we started a channel and uh, wanted to send us a hat and a shirt and some, some goodies. So that's a really nice shirt. So and it's laundry day. Anywho, I think that's what got into me. Made me want to wash this thing. Plus Duff is looking so dang clean because he went to the groomers today. He's a pretty puppy. Is he a pretty boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Let's uh, look this thing over. I don't know. They're just all the lichens. They were just grabbing at me to wash them off. The stainless on this car is freaking good. Like, there's a little tiny dinger there. I don't know what that emblem is. I'm guessing that is the god, Mercury. The hubcaps are freaking good on this car. And I couldn't tell you the last time that we had a car that had full hubcaps. Like we've had a few with dog dish hubcaps, but it seems like most of the stuff we do is no hubcaps at all, just solid steel wheels. Have we had anything with aluminum wheels? I don't know. Anyway, those are a good looking hubcap. They're not perfect, but they're in good shape, but that's just a good looking hubcap. You could put that on. Okay, it's gotta stay on a Mercury because it's got the Mercury logo. All right, and then here comes my rant, 1955. Pretty dang good year for cars, but you think of iconic cars, I think of iconic cars. You think of a 1955 Chevy Gasser, two-door post. You think of a Bel Air two-door hardtop. Maybe you think of a 55 Thunderbird. You're probably not thinking of a 55 Dodge, 55 Plymouth. 55 Ford had one of those. And that was a pretty dang good car. I like that car. I like my 55 Ford. I would probably take a 55 Ford over a Chevy. I don't know that I'm per se a GM guy, but 55 was a good year and 55 Fords are a dang hard car to beat. But if this car had two less doors and, I, and I'll give it this, I am 
more and more inclined to own a crew cab like this the older I get because you throw everybody in there, you can throw the dog in there, you can climb in and out easy, yada, yada, yada. But a 55 Mercury is a dang hard car to beat. This thing has got some freaking lines to it. Let's check this thing out. So up here, a lot of guys, they call it French in the headlights. So when you inset the headlight like that, but they would like mold in this body line right here, or seam, whatever you want to call it. They would steal these Mercury headlight rings because they got this nice stainless clip. I'm guessing they're made out of steel, probably because you can see some rust there. But these are the cat's pajamas. I was thinking they were from 53 Mercs. Okay, and the most iconic Merc is the 49 to 51 Merc. I don't know all the, which one's got different windows and which one's got the good grill and yada, yada, yada. They're all weird, but I think 51 Merc is the really, really good ones, but all 49 to 51s are pretty near and dear to anybody in the hot rod and customs heart. But. And then Mercury's kind of fell off the face of the earth until pretty much you got to what, the Cougar in 1967 through 1969. I do want to own one of those, but I want it to be a four speed so I can be like the bang shift Cougar on the roadkill garage. Maybe someday, probably isn't gonna happen, but if we're, good, if we're lucky, we'll maybe get one of an automatic. So French headlights, basically from the factory. It's got these babies right here. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Those are Dagmars. That's the uh, political term. You can't call them hoo-hahs. I think it's missing part of this trim right here. You can see where she's kind of snapped off. I'm guessing the logo is there. They almost got a factory looking hood scoop to them. Plus they got the spear, the bullet, the jet, whatever you want to call it. They got a slightly pronounced seam down the center of the hood. And then on the sides here, flares out at the end. I mean, how do you beat that car? Ralph was uh, this guy's father's name. He passed away, unfortunately. He bought this car about the last time it was registered in 1993. Had super plans for the car. And just, it never happened. It happens all the time we hear about it. He went to Fargo, went to an auction. The guy I got it from said that. It was probably the cheapest thing there that day since we brought it home. But I feel like Ralph had a plan for this car. And unfortunately, it just uh, it never happened. He was a superintendent, a principal, a school teacher, uh, a farmer, and uh, a mechanic, probably, because every farmer is, and everybody from that era was, but uh, an automobile restorer, he, he must not have been, or he uh, didn't have the area to do it, but anyway, we're going to get this car going for Ralph. He drove this thing home from Fargo, and where we get this in the tiny, tiny town of Menango, North Dakota, has got to be, I mean, a hundred and 20, 130 miles from Fargo, just shooting from the hip because I don't drive from Manango to Fargo, I don't know. But anyway, he drove this thing home. So ran when parked, they put it in the section line. His son drug it out of the section line a few years ago. Funny story is the farmstead, he's been on the channel a couple times. He was moving cows for, uh, he was moving cows for Wiry. I thought you told me he was solid muscle. Well, he's much stronger than he looks. I'm wiry. Anyway, he let me know about this car when he's moving cows for wiry, probably like three years ago, and he sent me a picture of it, and we looked it up on Google Earth, and it's like, man, that car's been sitting there, a million people driven by, that car is not for sale. So the fact that this thing came up on Facebook Marketplace, and this guy held it long enough so we could go get it, is just dumb luck? I don't know. Anyway, let's keep walking around this 53 Merc. I need to find out what color this is. So I think it was originally this darker yellow, and then somebody repainted it this lighter yellow, because if we pressure wash real hard, it comes off, doesn't it, Duff? A little bit of rust down there in the dog leg, the stainless steel down here, they screwed that on, because she's, she's a little soft down there. I'll show you, you can tell because of the way that it is. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. And the screw had already pulled out once. They didn't pull out, they, they ran it in there. And they didn't hit a solid enough spot, so then they ran it a little bit further back. So I hate to put any more holes in this stainless, but we might have to put one even further back to get a solid spot. It's got these three pieces of pot metal here. I mean, that's just cool. Stainless down there. It's got the stainless belt line. Stainless here all around the windshield. The stainless vents. Stainless across the top. And look at this. Rear <laughs> wing windows. Duff. It's just somebody to come visit us. 
don't know who it is, but I mean, when do you see rear wing windows? It's got the Mercury M on there again. She's a Monterey, finally figured out what model is. And look at these rear quarters and these taillights. Freaking sweet. It's Whitey, get him! I bet he didn't, I bet he didn't bring in. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll lick you to death. All right, we chase Whitey out of here, so let's uh, finish this walk around on this thing. It was after uh, several adult beverages, so never mind my, is it an impediment? The slur of my speech, so here we go. So look at the taillights. That taillight's super nice. This one's a little faded and cracked, so I, I think that one's a replacement. Or maybe this one just got a lot more sunlight. And then also you can see the uh, reverse light. She's pretty cracked up on this side, but this side she's whammoed out. It's got the single tailpipe. It's got the bumperettes back here. It's got mercury in the bumper. I mean, that's freaking awesome. You know what's not awesome? Crickets. Come here, you son of a biscuit. He's no more. What's under there, Duff? Get after it. Fuel fillers back here. Uh, somebody didn't pressure wash in there so good. <laughs> Again, the mercury head. I didn't know what transmission was in this thing, but she's a Mercomatic. You can tell, because of the way it is. Like, are you gonna suck the mice out of that tailpipe? Just breathe it all in. I have no idea what is wrong with that dog, but I'm pretty sure he just suck started this thing. Yeah, I, you probably dated a girl that could do that in high school. Anyway, back to this thing. I didn't know what model it was, but Again, it's a Monterey. I'm guessing there was a branch or something here that kind of rubbed into it, scratched it there and there. Whitey was here and he's like, oh, that's, that's a rear defroster. I said, no, nah, that's a speaker back there, but no, it's got a fan. You can see the window leaks and also it's been doing that for a while. You can tell by the tub and tile that uh, Ralph or the previous restorer put in there. There's quite a bit of it around the window there. Again, you can see the paint discoloration from when they, they, it's the original brighter stuff there to this lighter stuff they put on. And I think they just put some mud on over the bubbling, unfortunately. Pretty amateur restoration. She's uh, pretty crusty up there, but at least they put the screw in the right spot so that holds on. This window is cracked pretty good. Other than that, glass is pretty good. Even has full moco. On these rear wind windows, those things are swanky, aren't they, Duff? He's like, just open the door, let me in there, let me at him. But I think that's where we're gonna wrap her tonight. Cause, oh my gosh, I think the hood maybe went too far up one time and kind of creased her there and they reworked it. You can see how they repainted in there. We're calling her night, cause, uh, sandwiches, that's why. All right. We'll see you probably tomorrow when we get back to uh, Ralph, the old 55 Mercury. See you then. Well, we're back on this thing. I don't know what Mojo has got going on here. I guess we're gonna make a man basket for the telehandler handler so he can lift me up really high places, change light bulbs and fix the chimneys and whatnot. So let's uh, take a closer look at this thing since we got her in here. I literally just peeked in the door to take it out of park and put it in park and yada 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 i haven't checked this thing out duff is chomping at the bit as you can see how does it smell you know Ooh, she's a little a little stale not too bad so uh, oh man that rolls down nice look at these door handles look at that door panel look at the style you got one two three colors she's a tri-toner plus it's got that Stainless strip in the middle. We got this stainless up here. This thing is good. We got mercury on the uh, tread plate. Sill plate, that's the word. My uncle had a 47 Chevy fleet line and he would murder you if you stepped on those getting in and out of that car. He also had a 40 Chevy and you didn't step on the running boards. You stepped over it and got in the car because that's what car guys do, especially when kids were climbing in and out. You got screamed at. But I see why. So, it's got the typical, I don't know, is this in the 80s? Kind of common to wrap steering wheels. You just settled right in there, didn't you? You're a silly pup. Look at all these controls. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay, all the loving. So, apparently Duff 
thinks it smells way too good in here for him to sniff around. So he needs uh, some attention, but the show must go on. So at least it wasn't, come, hey, come on, you're, you're not helping right now. At least the shifter's got park reverse neutral drive and low instead of being, uh, what was it, power glide park neutral drive low reverse. I think this 63, yeah. Buick was the same way. But look at these controls up here. You got, uh, for the blower, you got your vent. Well, the blower's got de-ice, fast, slow, and off. There are lights down here. Like, this whole gauge pod is just swanky. You got, that's for your vent on the left, and that's for your vent on the right. When oh, you can flip her over to heater. Oh, they actually all work pretty decent yet. We got lights. Oh, and then this one says interior light. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if you turned it, pulled it. Pop it. Twist it. Who knows? 95,982 miles, which is quite a few for back then. She's got a 110 Speedo. Again, the two-tone carries into the dash at the stainless divider. Two-tone on the visors, even? I don't know if this is factory, but I assume so. Oh, 5 -oh. he made a nice little hole there, of course. Did, did you find some smells down there? How do you bend like that? You're a silly dog. Got a factory clock, factory radio. It looks like they put some aftermarket speakers down there. Yeah. I'm guessing there should be a speaker right there as well. You got the, I don't know, is that the Mercury emblem? I don't know, something over there. Oh man, it even says Monterey on the door for the passenger. Did not get one of those on the driver's side. These freaking cars had some sex appeal. Carpet, I don't know, was, somebody took the transmission out the easy way and uh, cut the carpet and then stitched her back together or what they got going on. Well, that's what he's smelling over here. They got a little mouse trap thinger going on. What you call it? A little uh, duct tape action going on in the heater box. Uh, some miscellaneous house wiring. I don't know, speaker wire, what they got going on there. Looks like you can open the heater duct there. Another one over there. Let's get the glove box open, see if there's any goodies. <sighs> What do we got in here? Engine oil. Not lower than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, use SAE 20 or 20W. Down to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, use 10W. And below minus 10, use SAE 5W, looks like. And if you got 7, 10, 15, oh yeah. Then you got all your pressures for your tires. If you got the 7, 10, 15s, the 7, 60, 15s. Yeah, all except noted convertible and station wagon. Ralph Fickner. <laughs> oh man, this was advertised as a 55. It's a 54. Little do I know. 41 a 93. She had 95,000 miles on it. 95, 775. And so, for about a little over 200 miles on it uh, before they parked it. We got a little notepad. What went on here? At 80,000 miles, I got plugs and condenser, fuel pump, oil filter, grease the rear end, transmission, wheel cylinder kit. Set the timing. Yeah. Got the service schedule going on there. Bought this thing at Target for uh, 39 cents. What do we got in here? Well, that's when they put gas in it, even. Looks like the previous owner, Henry, was in Grand Forks, North Dakota, of the 54. Can't believe it got the year wrong. Just shows you how much I know about Mercury's. Looks like Mayville Motor Company in Mayville, North Dakota, sold this thing to Henry on July 9th, 1986. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool, dig finding this stuff. So it looks like Hank bought this thing on the uh, 9th of July, and on the 2nd of July in 86, at H.E. Uh, Everson Company in Mayville, North Dakota, the house that service is building. I wonder if that place still exists. Looks like they had stores, Botno, Cooperstown, 
RV, Mayville, Rugby, the Geographical Center of North America, West Fargo, and Laramore. And Minnesota had them in Carlstead, Hallett, Crookston, Barnesville, and Moorhead. Looks like he bought a FD. Is that a rotor? And some sea foam. I mean, that's a cap. FD8182X. I think that's a rotor part number. I don't know. Six dollars and seventy cents and some sea foam for three forty nine. Cool. So he basically tuned her up for uh, ten dollars and sixty cents. So based on what I'm seeing in here, it looks like Hank bought this thing in '86, and he had all the registrations till '93, and that's when Ralph got it. And Ralph didn't really drive it. Uh, looks like Henry bought it with eighty thousand, and then Ralph got her with about 95,000 on it by the looks of things and that's where we're at today so yeah it's cool to find a little history in there semi-local Mayville's just up the road so we're gonna put all this back in the glove box for the next person I mean if we get rid of it Duff has already fallen in love with it oh the mousies got all of the headliner so many entry and exit wounds here is the limited warranty sold as is 7986. And uh it doesn't tell us how much. Dang it. I wish it would tell us how much they paid for it. Oh well. Probably be uh, upset with what he paid for this thing when it was a 32-year-old car. Put all that stuff back in there. I know some of you guys really dig that stuff. I kind of do too. Uh, wasn't quite as much fun stuff in there as there was in the all. What are we calling it? The Red Ed Redemption. Oh, electric truck lift. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Spanish steak with Hunt's tomato sauce. The recipe is inside. Wow. What a deal. Easy one dish meals. Try it out. 51 Ford F4. I'm going to put these keys back in here. Look, there's even a spare. Oh, that's the original Ford key. Oh, and then it says 56 on here. Oh, who knows? We're going with it's a 54. Key says Ford. Looks like there's been some action down here with the door stop. Must have got torn out at one time and somebody riveted her back in and where it tore the door out, they riveted a galvanized plate over there. Not the worst repair I've ever seen. Anything good going on in the back seat back there? Well, it looks like we got a chunk of, uh, is that a spare thing for the hood? Oh yeah, freaking sweet. I don't know if it's the same one. My butt is wet because uh, we had the window down last night and we washed it. So, yeah. Oh, it's got the typical Midwest pickup truck seat cover in green. It's in good shape, though. Let's see if this thing is right. It is. A little, little chewy in the uh, emblem, but better than that one. Let's set this somewhere where it's not going to get busted. Yeah, not there. That's a better idea. You want to give us a, oh my gosh, run down to the back seat. The mices have been in there. It's got a little bit different carpet back here than the front. I'm guessing that's what the stockish seat would look like. Okay, you can have the back seat all yourself. It does have seat belts in it though. What a deal. What else is under there? Anything good? I'll take your word for it. Yeah, we got the good door panel up there. This one's... She's been leaking. I think, uh, yeah, we got some sealage issues on this thing. All right, Duff, you uh, gonna join us up here to open the hood or I gotta do this myself? I guess I'm doing it myself. I still got to touch you without you, Duff. So, it's got a Y block. I'm guessing 239, maybe 272. Let's go grab some light so you guys can see and I can see and everybody's happy. All right, just uh, did a little Google search and this thing should have a 256 cubic inch Y block, which makes sense that it wouldn't be a 239, which is what a lot of the Fords had that year because the Mercury Flatheads in 1953 had 255 cubic inches. So it wouldn't really make sense for them to go backwards and go from 255 cubes to 239. So they made it one cube larger, 256 cubes. And in 1955, which I thought this car was, those cars are way different. Makes sense, I owned a 53 Ford, this is a 54. 
Merck and they share a lot of resemblance and in 55 everything absolutely changed and so this is an absolutely gorgeous car for 54 because I'm not a fan of 54 Fords, 53 Fords, 54 Chevys, 49 and 54 Chevys just don't do it for me. I had a 54 Chevy as well but 256 cubic inches of Y block goodness under the hood here. Please be good to us. You can tell that it's the Mercury Y block. It says Mercury across the uh, valve cover. The dead giveaway on Y blocks, two bolts going through the valve cover right there through the center. And then almost always they have this crossover tube. I know some of the big trucks and some of the hot rods that have been converted. And then the Thunderbirds had dual exhaust and some of the other cars had dual exhaust too, but the majority of the population had this crossover. Look at this ginormous freaking oil bath air cleaner. Little tiny, I don't know, looks like a Holly two barrel under there. Flexi fan, that's definitely not factory. Uh, flexi hose on the bottom and a flexi hose on the top. We also got the go fast radiator cap with the old flip lever. Typical single reservoir fruit jar, master cylinder. Got a little, must be a neutral safety switch or reverse lights or something down there on the column. Whole bunch of uh, hood insulation that can find a new home so we don't burn it up. You know, cause it's, it's definitely gonna run. We'll just set that on the floor over there. We'll pick that up another day. Got the heater blower motor way up top over here. She's a hybrid. I can see the extension cord down here. Oh, let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. Please be some nice, fresh 200 mile oil. Yes! It's a quart low, which I'd rather have it a little low than overfull, meaning a bunch of other liquid got down there. We got, I'm guessing, a, oh, look at this. In 03, somebody tried starting her 10 years after it was registered last. So, that knocks 10 years off our will it run, even though somebody could have maybe not got it running when they put this new battery in an 03. Oh, are the uh, snaps still good? Nope, that's so much. Can't get them to pop. Guess that was their isolator for the battery, along with a little soggy cardboard up here. All of the farmer fixes. Mojo's gonna be mad when he shows up tomorrow and sees the mess I made. He'll get over it. Oh, look at that little guy. That looks venomous. All right, uh, we got some more bubble wrap going on back here. That stuff looks like it got hot. Uh, who thought? She is a six volt car. Obviously, I think 56 is for sure 12 volts. This is two years before that. Somebody could have converted it though. There's probably a generator somewhere oh yeah way down low you know it cleans up the engine bay let's grab the fan blade and see what happens doesn't have a clutch fan so here we go come on don't be stuck yes okay maybe not premature excitement story of my life for budget and that's a start. I think before we even get crazy, we're gonna pull the valve covers off because these things are notorious for sticking rocker shafts and then they will bend the push rods and we don't wanna to have to dig through our pile of garbage to find some straight push rods or heaven forbid straighten out some push rods because I would get screamed at by all the internet experts. And as sticky as that thing is going back and forth, we should probably uh, remove some spark plugs and lubricate the cylinders. So, I'm gonna grab some sockets, pull some valve covers, and some spark plugs. And maybe we'll even pull this air cleaner off. And that'll give us about 14 more cubic feet of workspace underneath this hood. I've seen boat engines smaller than this entire air cleaner lid. Let's start over here with the driver's side because it's way easier to get at. Rubber 
pressure out of there. Maybe it'll pop right off. Maybe. Oh, look at that. That looks phenomenal under there. Look at inside that valve cover, no sludge. I think we're just gonna spray a little looby doob on those things and uh, put it back together. I don't know if we're gonna pull the other side off. Usually these rocker arms will get rusty and seize the rocker shaft, but I don't see like that's gonna be an issue on this one. A little Zeppo ain't gonna hurt though. Man, there's like no sludge in there. This thing had to have been gone through or was very, very, very well maintained for 100,000 miles. It had to have been gone through. I wouldn't be surprised if we found a rebuild tag somewhere. Oh, the wide block firing order. Let's, these are all stiff enough, the spark wood wires. They should just fall right back into place. Oh yeah, look at that plug. Not a bunch of carbon on it. There isn't a bunch of rust on it. I mean, it's not even hardly sooted up. Some good old champions in there. F10s, H10Cs. I'm uh, getting a little bit excited, guys. This, this might be our lucky Y block. For those of you that are not aware, we have a terrible history with wide blocks. I think we uh, ended up having to swap engines to get the last one done. And that was after we bought several engines that were already out of vehicles that were known good. Oh yeah, these spark plugs. Like these are the best looking spark plugs we've pulled in a long time. Made in USA. Okay, I'm gonna pull all these out real fast like, and uh, we'll talk about it later. Dang it. Remind me to fish my 1316 spark plug socket out of the floor drain. This is why you never work over a floor drain. This is why you also own multiple spark plug sockets. Let's get this hog. <laughs> Carburetor stuck? Nope. Oh man, even all that goofy linkage is working. Nice. This coil is in the way, so we gotta move that in order to get the belt covered. Alrighty, we got all eight out. One of them over on the uh, driver's side, third one from the front. I don't know how Ford numbers these things. Probably uh, number seven. If they're numbered like regular Fords, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was a real pain. One of them on the uh, one of them on the passenger side. I think number three. You know, a little bit of condensation issue going on there. So that was the only plug that. Didn't look freaking gorgeous. One of them had a little bit of, I think it was number four. Maybe it was burning a little bit of oil. Yeah, everything looked really good, so fingers crossed. It's uh, pretty late here tonight, so I'm gonna get back at her tomorrow. I'll let her soak overnight, spray down the rocker arms. I 
Should have pressure washed the engine to get all the dirt off the top of the engine before we did this, but you know, I'm not gonna say I'm perfect. I think somebody likes this thing though. What do you think, pal? You tuckered out for the night? You still gotta go and make me supper. What do you think of this thing? You keeping it? We'll keep the seat for you to nap on anyway. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully we get this thing cranking over real good. No stuck valves, and all kinds of compression. It's gonna be good. I have faith. And uh, Ralph here. Should we call it Ralph? Should we call it Henry? Hank? He had it quite a bit longer. Well, drove, put more miles on it anyway. You guys ponder on that. I'll ponder on it at night. Oh, these got a spin on oil filter? And not a canister type? What a deal. So that's the other thing. In 55, the Mercury's got the 292 version. So Ford on the Y block that I'm aware of made a 239, that was basically a 54 only deal. A 256 that we're seeing here. A 272, which is what a lot of the uh, 55 Fords, 54, 55 Fords had. The 292, pretty common. That's what a 55 Mercury would have had. 56 Mercury would have had a 312. And then, yeah, I think the 312 was the big dog. They didn't make very many 312s. Mostly 292 is what you come across, then a couple of 272s. And I'd never even heard of a 256 until I Google box this thing. So, all right, I'll leave you with that. See you in a second, which is another day or three, whatever we get working on this thing. Not like we don't have anything else going on in this place. Oh, yeah, Dad's Buick is back. Had a little vacuum leak we had to take care of. We'll get her back to him, though. All right, we're back on the Yukon Yellow. 54 mercury here today it's like the last warm day it's supposed to have a really good cold snap and it's it is it's warm out there so see so if we can get this thing running and maybe take this thing out and enjoy the last nice day of summer even though it's fall what do you say duff get outside and show off your haircut you want me to open the door so you can just hang out in there while i work again all right fine <laughs> There you go. It's all yours. So pretty. Such a good boy. All right, we're going to throw a battery in this thing. Dave's not here, man. He's our battery sponsor this week. First thing we got to do is get the old six volter out here. Come on, hood. We should probably put some lube on those. Ford's hood hinge designs until like 57 were not good. You can see this hood's could go up about another foot and a half if uh, these hood hinges weren't all. I won't even bash the design because somebody like Dwayne's gonna get mad. Oh, GM's hood design wasn't any better. Okay, let's get the old heavy duty Dura start out of here. Better unhook that so we don't park out the battery, you know, because I'm sure this thing's got a lot of life left in her. It's only 19 and a half years old. Come on! Oh no. Just snap off. Yep. I'm pretty sure that this battery cable wants to stay with the battery. Don't worry how we're gonna hook that back up. Out with the six volt, in with 12 volt Dave. No, not David Newburn from Finnegan's Garage. But Dave's not here, man, Dave. And yes, we are gonna hook it up negative ground. If we can get this terminal to go on. We better go get the spreader that everybody likes me to use as a hammer. Spreaders in there. Oh, I'm pretty sure this uh, cable end's just gonna break. She's not in good shape. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. 
Oh, you tighten that back up. You just get your battery cable clamp here. You adjust it to the proper width. Look at that. Good as new. No smoke even? Sweet. Get our loser switch out. We're going for the only post on the solenoid. And I believe this has to be hooked up to ground. So, we're going to hook that up to our ground clamp. Let's see what happens. Nothing. And we got to hook it up to positive. Well, we got something to happen. I know, we probably should have cleaned up this battery terminal. Try her again. It tried. Okay. Let me think for a second here. Here's the plan. Dave's not here. He's a little tuckered out. Hook the uh, tester up to it. It says we gotta charge him, so. Dave's on the charger, and Coop over here is filling in. Where did you go now, silly ground? Let's see what happens now. Pick up our ground clamp device here. Playing tough to get, eh? I'll crank her to the moon if we got it. There, good and tight. Now it's like the loser switch back up, see what happens. I'm not guaranteeing that was our issue, but it's worth a shot. It's the simple things first. Here we go. Hey! I'm not right very often, but my senses were right on that one. Let's zing her over for a bit. Get those cylinders cleaned up. Any sludge that's in there, rust or whatever. And then we're gonna see if all the uh, valves and such are moving. We got one stuck right there. One stuck back there. Oh. This is great. This is great. I'm gonna go check the other side. Getting some oil pressure, even. So, this should be number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's how Ford does it. But you can see the valve is stuck down for the exhaust on number three. And the intake on number four is completely missing the push rod. So, I'm guessing that's somewhere inside of the engine. Or somebody took the valve cover off and borrowed it, but I feel like it's probably down there somewhere. So we need a push rod, and we also need to unstick a valve. And this one doesn't seem like it's going up and down. Well, there it's going. My gosh, for oil. Son of a biscuit. We're getting all of the oil flow up here. Oh, it's the uh, intake on number one. That's what's not moving. Why is that not moving? Awesome. I'm gonna turn it over until the exhaust is open. And then we're gonna see if we can pry up on the intake. That pushes it down. Because they're never both open at the same time. So that should go down. Oh, the fate of the old Y block. They don't take well to sitting. I'm gonna go fetch up a little bit different prying apparatus. I still don't know why that push rod isn't going down. Oh, it's because it's not even on the lifter. Oh, there's the push rod on that one. I'm gonna grab a magnet too. So maybe we can back out this adjuster, get this lifter out, or push rod out, get it back on the lifter. That might resolve that issue. And maybe we can do the same back there. Back off our jam nut. It'll back up our adjustment screw. 
just far enough so I get some slack on the push rod and we can get it centered onto the lifter. You can see just enough in there to see when it's on the lifter. I'm going to bump it over. I should be able to feel it going down. Uh, and not pinch my fingers between the adjuster and the push rod. That wouldn't be good. Oh yeah, she's going up and down. So, we're going to need to adjust the number one intake later. Don't ask me what the adjustment process is. I think we're just going to go until that exhaust valve is barely open. And then we're going to set this so there's just, I don't know, 10 thousandths, 15 thousandths of play. All right, our exhaust is open, so we know we're on the base side of the camshaft. adjusted. Just gonna clatter a bit or hang the valve open if you uh, got to adjust it too tight. Probably supposed to do this with the engine running, who knows. Okay, so we got cylinder number one resolved hopefully, provided that valve is not sticking on us. Now we need to fish the push rod out of number four back here. And get that set in place. We're gonna have to do the same thing back there once we get the push rod out. Okay, I need a smaller magnet. All right, try number two with the old magnetic stick. Come on now, don't tell me that these push rods are made out of something that is not magnetic. There we go. We're gonna try to slide it all the way out just to make sure it's not bent. Yep. How can we show you? Let's get a flat surface and I'll show you. So the top of my toolbox is about as flat a surface as we're gonna get around here. And if this thing is flat, true, it should roll. See how it hangs? There and there. We're gonna go put her in the vise and try straighten it a little bit. You know, as opposed to going and find one that ain't bent. And usually what causes this is a stuck valve. The valve is stuck semi-closed and as the lifter comes up on the camshaft, pushes on this push rod and it can't push that rocker arm, which pushes the valve. The hip bone is connected to the knee bone, which is connected to the camshaft lobe. This is your weak link. So these are what get bent. Get bent. Oh. Okay, let's see what we can do. This surface here isn't as smooth, but it'll give us a baseline. The bench is too far away. We need a hammer to adjust some valves anyway, so let's, let's do some hammering. Ideally, you're gonna want this thing perfectly true, but we got her so it rolls on this wood bench. Good enough for the girls we go with. We can uh, always swap it out for a different one later, but we won't. So before we turn it over, we're gonna wanna make sure that valve is doing valve things. Maybe it was just fine. Maybe this push rod just was made out of some weak metal. It's not really a thing, is it? People say so. so we probably should take this rocker shaft assembly off. So we can tap on this valve. Kind of stuck on the way down, but it seems like it came back up. We might be alright. We're gonna spray a bunch of Zeppelin on them just to be sure though. A little's good, a lot's better. These push rods are not 
bi-directional. They don't go both ways like that gal that you uh, experimented with in college. The smaller end goes into the lifter. The larger end goes into your the ball on your adjuster on your rocker arm. If you got them in the wrong way, you uh, were trying real hard. All right, where's the money shot there? Oh, had it. I think that's it. All right, I'm gonna bump the key over here and we're gonna see if it goes up and down on the lifter does before we adjust it under the valve. Once I figure out why that's not working because the wire came off of the solenoid. Easy fix. Both these valves on number one look like they're working, so let's adjust this one and uh, see what happens. All right, we got our exhaust open. Now let's adjust this one so there's just a little bit of play. We'll be good to go. I know we got Ralph turning over here. Let's uh, give her the old finger compression test and see what we got because we've had several Y blocks that are loose that have really stuck rings and we can't get any compression. So hopefully we got some of that now that we've got the valves situation situated and such. Let's start with number five here because we got more real estate. Holy buckets. Good compression. Pretty good on six. Seven, eh, it's all right. Eight is awesome. Starting to feel good about this. Let's try number one. Oh. Not real good on one. Two's pretty good. Three's good. Four is good. So it's only one. And one was the one with the stuck valve. So maybe we'll uh, check, see if that valve's stuck up. Stuck down, stuck down, stuck open. Maybe we can uh, adjust this rocker a little bit, pry on it, see if we can't get it up a little bit. Maybe it's stuck down just a hair, I don't know. Really a, a great spot for serviceability on the old the lower motor here, but not so much for servicing anything else under the hood. Nope, I think that uh, that was all the way up. I'm sure it'll gain compression after we run her for a bit. The other seven will carry it for sure. All right, let's see if we got some sparkage going on. All right, the coil's not bolted down anymore, so we're gonna have to two-hand it. There we go. Six-volt coils love the 12-volt action. All right, that wire's coming from the firewall, so that's the one we're gonna wanna hook up to. Now would be the time to put a 12-volt coil on since it's just laying there loose, right? Yeah, I suppose. Oh, spark, I hooked her up. I bet we're gonna have sparkage here. Will that metal plate there work? These don't spark me. By the power of Grayskull. Ow! Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. Ah! I don't know why it's shocking me. Son of a biscuit. Oh. Sitting for, what was that, 20 years that battery is? 19 years old? All kinds of spark. Let's get the hot sauce and let's do something awesome. Like get a Y block running. I think I'm gonna set the valve covers back on because this thing pumps a ton of oil, like Exxon Valdez-esque. One of the worst oil spills in US history. We don't want that making any more of a mess than it already has. Crappy stuck 351 Windsor and we changed the oil. We get a really nice 356. We're gonna run the old black stuff. 
That's right, this stuff actually looked pretty good though. I mean, it should, it's only got like 200 miles on it. Yes, I have the coil on hook, so I'm not gonna blow my face off. Before we get this thing cranking over too much more, let's pull the fuel line off. We're not sucking any more bad fuel from the tank if we haven't already. Good news is, the rubber hose is dry. So we shouldn't have been pulling anything from the tank. All right, let's fill up the float bowl. Oh, she's coming up the breather, so she's full. Pick up our coil wire. Let's go make sure that it's not in gear. That seems like a pretty solid idea. Is it in gear? It's a good thing that we checked the shifter because she was in drive. So if this transmission is going to work. She went uh, right over our plastic cart full of tools and probably right into the overhead door that's not open. Which we should probably open because things might get smoky. We'll do that once she fights. Fights. No, this thing is not fighting us. Once this thing fires right off. Here we go. Uh, say it with me now. Slingshot, engage. Oh, just kidding. Uh, we gotta put spark plugs in. <laughs> Stay tuned for more shenanigans. Evil shenanigans. Wow. I never cease to amaze myself. That was a spark plug that's down there hanging out with the spark plug socket in the floor drain. Yeah, that's right, this thing is gonna fight us. Don't work on your car over the floor drain. I'd like to say I'll never do that again, but I know better. I can already see all the comments down below. Don't forget your spark plug socket and spark plug in the floor drain. So much more room on this side. They make mercuries with heater deletes. That would make them much easier to work on the passenger side. Good thing I save everything. I dug up this old Champion H11. I think these are H10Cs, so oh, we better uh, gap this thing. Just kidding, it looks fine. 35 thou? Yeah, sure. Don't worry, we'll swap out the number five spark plug at some point when we fish the other one out of the uh, floor drain. Or when we give it a tune up, you know, because we always tune these things up after we get them running. Every time we just don't do it on camera. If you'll believe that, I got some oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you as well. Well, now let's see how things go with spark plugs in the engine. I'm guessing it'll help. But it helps. It, it, it does help. What do I know? Say it with me now. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. spark anymore. Ooh, she's trying though. Six volt starters love 12 volts. Try some choke action. I'm not gonna lie, that starter does not sound happy. I got 
gotta imagine that starter, that six volt starter, getting woken up with 12 volts like this is probably like waking up with somebody putting uh, some jumper cables on your nipples hooked up to a 24 volt battery. So you're doing just fine, little buddy. Let's get this going now. Why does it die off right away? Come on! There we go! It's alive! It's alive! Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! No knocks, no clunks, no clanging, no pinging. She sounds all right. When I was setting the exhaust cam up, I noticed that the muffler's pretty blown out, so I could hear a little exhaust leak going on over there, but yeah. I should probably check the coolant. And we gotta hook up a fuel source, because I'm sure the fuel tank is real sludgy. I'll hook that coil wire, kids. Thinking we're probably gonna Well, that fuel filter might be okay. I guess we ain't out nothing. You shouldn't let anything pass, you know. Filters don't just go bad. I got a primer bulb in my fuel tank, so I'm gonna see if we can't fill this up with fuel. And then we'll have to figure out if this uh, fuel pump's doing fuel pump things. It's cool because it's got the glass sediment bowl on there, so it's double filtered, I guess. Let's push an air out the. Uh, Vents on the carburetor, so let's be doing. Oh, yeah, she's filling the filter up. Oh, must be pushing past the needle and seat. The needle and seat must be stuck down. Remember, anything you want can be a hammer. Bang on the screws because they're easily replaceable. Don't bang on the body of the carburetor because you screw that up. And uh, you gotta find a different body for a carburetor. You can play music to it if you want to. All right, let's see what happens now. So this baby will run on her own for a bit. Fuel pump is not pumping. Oh no, that filter is still full. Idle screw is turned all the way in already. That's not ideal. Doesn't seem like it wants to idle unless the choke is partially closed. You guys probably couldn't see it on the camera, but the fuel pump is, it's pumping fuel, but it's also pumping it externally. So I'm pretty sure the diaphragm is wasted. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to bypass that and just run an electric pump because Gas is not cheap. Don't worry, we're not parked over the floor drain. How dare you! Any more like we were when we lost the socket and spark plug. But uh, this beautiful day is over, so I think we're gonna punch out, go uh, get some fresh air, and we'll uh, see you tomorrow. See if we can get a transmission working, figure out where we're gonna put our fuel tank, and figure out a fuel pump brakes, all that good stuff. We'll see you tomorrow. This thing runs good though.
pretty excited. How about you, pal? You just want to go for an R-I-D-E, don't you? I know. What are you making for supper tonight? I should grill something up. Sounds like a good night to grill something. Okay. See you in a couple seconds. So I was laying in bed last night. And you know what I was thinking about. No, not that. We gotta know what's in the trunk of this thing, so let's check it out. It's freaking flies. It's uh got down like 37 degrees Fahrenheit last night, so that's that's five degrees above freezing. Nice part about that is no more uh, flies and wood ticks, mosquitoes, crickets, grasshoppers, frogs, all that stuff. So you can go back to HE double hockey sticks where they come from. All right, let's try this thing. I'd have Duff do this, but he doesn't have any thumbs. Woo! We got the one matching wheel, because one of them's painted black. That looks like a Aftermarket bumper jack. Anything else good? Two spares. Because one just don't cut her all the time. What's this? Trucker bomb. No, we're just gonna leave that there. Cheese curds from 1993. Oh, mothballs. You wanna hear my dad joke? You ever smelled mothballs? How do you get them to spread their legs apart? Okay, no more dad jokes. Just kidding, you know there'll be more. Uh, I think I'd rather have the smell of Mice and mothballs. We got a bunch of cloth wrapped wiring. Yeah, nothing great back here. Pretty solid floor. That tire's been sitting there a while. This thing's a little squishy down there. We might have to get this thing up on the hoist. And see what the floors look like. I uh, noticed when I was really struggling to get that wheel on there, the floor pans were not that great. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when I was swapping the tires on this thing, I had a heck of a time getting the wheel and tire on this side. I had to have the car all the way up, the rear end all the way down, and then I had to jack up the right hand side of the differential to get this side to swing down just enough to get that tire in. I don't know how in the heck with a bumper jack you would ever get the tire off this thing and back on. Coming off, it was flat, it was fine, so I suppose you could deflate it and put it back on there, but something ain't right. And it's not like there's a whole lot of tire under there, it's just the factory, whatever. 650.15 or something. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll go back to work on this thing and you can hang out on the seat over there. Yay, it's that time of the year we get to listen to the furnace run. So excited. I should build a shop in Florida or Alabama or Oklahoma or Tennessee or something. All right, I gotta figure out where we're at. I think we were messing with the fuel pump. We need to bypass the fuel pump, so let's do that. Well, I think we got our fuel tank situation resolved. We still gotta put a strap across the top, you know, really class the place up. But hopefully that thing is gonna have enough pissies from being gravity, you know, to feed that thing. We don't have to use a uh, fuel pump. We could always put the primer bulb closer to the windshield and squeeze that, but we just gotta keep it from laying on the manifold. That's the problem with these Y-block manifolds is they come up like that and everything can kinda lay on them and get hot so whatever now believe it or not for the first time ever we're gonna put a new coil on something and it's a 12 volt coil so let's do that and then we don't have to worry about blowing that thing up we'll throw that one in the glove box just in case uh somebody wants to convert this thing back to six volt someday pretty straightforward you can just take the clamp off of there pull the wire off there and then pull your wire coming from your ignition the wire going to the starter off and it's that easy. Watch me screw it up. Oh, that's classy. And then I have a wire end on there just uh, twisting her in place. Now we just gotta take this clampy do off of there. Looks like it's even an Eklund coil. It's like an IC-8 6 volt. So somebody's already put a coil on it once. Look at that clamp. They painted her to match the engine though. Somebody, this engine was probably pretty fancy at one point when somebody redid this thing. All right, swap that clamp out and we'll put her back together.
So we got our 12 volt coil in place. Negative goes to the distributor. Positive goes to the ignition switch. Somebody's been in here, done some wiring. They got, instead of usually your 14 gauge, they got some 12 gauge in here. I'm guessing it's just twisted together and taped up. Same thing with this eyelet over here, and they just had it wrapped around there. So we actually put an eyelet on there, but this thing should be rewired at some point. A couple of new wires. Look at this. The old style bread tie. Even holding the wiring on the firewall. I haven't seen one of those yet, so that's new. And then this clamp here actually holds the choke as well. And since we gotta have this thing choke to make it run because we're not gonna go through the carburetor, we uh, better hook that up. Funny thing is that this is a automatic choke actually. Somebody put a little conversion kit on it to make it manually operated because it wasn't apparently operating the way they wanted it to. Well, provided the transmission moves it. Let's see what we got for brakes. Oh, are you gonna? Press the brake pedal. I know it's not gonna have brakes. Well, I shouldn't say that. But if I were a betting man, I'd say there's about a 98.2% chance that this thing is not gonna have brakes. I'd say there's probably a 27% chance that that brake pedal is stuck right where it's at. Good news is it's on the firewall and not below the floorboards like a 54 Chevy would be. So that's handy, at least we can work on it maybe. Uh, excuse me, sir. Would you mind pushing that brake pedal for me? Oh, you only open hoods? All right. Don't mind me. And 27% chance was right. Oh, don't worry. I fixed it. So I'm guessing uh, no brakes. Let's pull the cap off the reservoir. See what it looks like in there. I'm guessing it's going to be dry and rusty with a chance of a little bit of Fermentation of some aluminum and metal sorts in there. You know, a little fur burger going on of sorts. How do you like that? It's kind of like a weatherman analogy of a master cylinder. I love brakes. I love manual transmissions because then you don't need brakes, technically, unless you ask uh, Highway Patrol. So we got an aluminum cap on a cast iron reservoir. What are the odds we can even get this thing loose? Oh, Want to bet that hex just twists off? Oh, well, we're going to have to get a six point. And by twisting off, I meant not rounding off, but uh, actually that top will just twist right off there. Let's see what happens with a little impact action. Let's try an 11 sixteenths. Maybe we'll get an 18 millimeter. I always love when you gotta use a metric socket on a car from 1954. So 19 millimeter is basically a three quarter, which is what this should be. So we're gonna go with an 18 millimeter, which is slightly smaller. And no luck. I guess we'll keep, oh, maybe we can hammer that thing on there. Here we go. I'm sure this hammering action will just, probably just jar this aluminum loose and it'll just come right out with my fingers. Always do this with your nicest chrome sockets. Good news is gear inch is lifetime guarantee. I told you. Oh, don't go in the floor drain. I told you that hex would just come off there. I didn't mention that I would have to hammer it off, but here we are. Okay. Oh, there's a little breather hole in there. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. I'm pretty sure the ones with the plastics or the rubber seal around them. The uh, condom lid styles, they don't have those holes. Oh, there's one on both sides. Nifty. Yep. Empty and rusty. Before I fully commit to the fuel tank on the roof, you know, we could paint it yellow. It'll blend in. We'll get ourselves a nice yellow ratchet strap. Nobody will even know what's there. I thought, you know, let's check the tank in the back because then we got a fuel gauge that works and such. And we don't have to worry about kinking the fuel line in the hood when you close it, so. So I got the schlong out, and then I pull off the fuel cap here. It's hidden behind the license plate. Immediate remorse. It smells putrid in there. It smells like dinosaurs had chili about 2.3 million years ago. And then uh, followed that up with some hard boiled eggs at the bar later that night, and woke up and had some Chinese, and then passed out. It's 
It's not good. And we didn't even need the schlong, which likes to go in dirty, dark places like this, because the way the filler neck is, I'll show you. Pull this lid down, and you stick your light in there, and you can actually see the bottom of the tank. Or you can see, Duff, you wanna shake the car? Oh no, there's still fuel in there. Oh yeah. Can you see the bottom of the tank? It doesn't look like it. You just gotta believe me. There's a uh, liquid in there and a whole bunch of rust and it smells terrible. So we're just going with the boat tank for now. I don't even know if you can get a replacement for these. Maybe we'll have to uh, get this one cooked out if we get to that point. Next episode, right? Yeah, like we're gonna do that. Let's just put our fuel cap back on there and forget about that. Bill Clinton administration fuel that's in there. How much was fuel in 1992-93? I'm guessing like right under a buck. If I had to guess. Okay. Let's find a strap for that boat tank. Let's see if the transmission works. What do you think about that? Oh, he's he's ready. He's in the passenger side, ready to do his thing. That must be a dang nice seat. Stuff approves of that part. It's fresh out of yellow ratchet straps, so green's gonna have to do. Let's see if we can not kink the fuel hose. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with the way these hood hinges are. Let's see if we can't drive around to the other side of the shop, get her up on the hoist, mess with the brakes. Speaking of hood hinges, and just uh, move this off the seat. Looks like we got an extra backup light that's busted. And uh, used hood springs. What a deal. I don't know that that's our issue, but that's what uh, Hank or Ralph thought. So they're there. Man, those shut nice, don't they, Duff? A lot better than this does. All right, I'm going to use both hands and get this shut so we don't end up with a square body kink on the old Monterey here. Hopefully we got the door up high enough. We wouldn't want that uh, bottom of that to catch our fuel tank here. That would be not so fulfilling. Well, what do you think, pal? I think we'll be able to drive her out of here. So I did notice when I was playing around in here, it does not crank in park. So I don't know if there's something got to be adjusted. But if you put her in neutral, she cranks. Give her a little choke, eh? Dr. Lowe. I wonder if he's related to uh, Curtis Lowe or maybe Rob Lowe. All right. Hey, no brakes, remember. Here's a good boy. See what happens. Hey, we got a transfusion. This thing, she's good. A couple of squeaks, some rattles and such. This uh, ratchet strap, kind of not in an ideal situation for my head here, but whatever. You know, I think it'll whip a donut. We don't need brakes to do a donut. Let's take one more hot lap around the shop. What's laying under, oh, the battery. The battery is not tied down, so uh, we're not gonna. Oh, as soon as you, as soon as you pull her out a low, she immediately goes to drive. Let's put her in park here. You uh, keep an eye on the car. Looks like oil gauge is working. Looks like we got, I don't know, 30 pounds of oil pressure at idle. Rev her up. She almost hits 40. Nothing to scoff at there. And as you'll remember when we had the valve covers up, it's getting all kinds of volume. I don't know about pressure, but she's got volumes of oil. Definitely needs a muffler. All right, I'm gonna move uh, the car out the hoist, and then we'll run this in there. Try not to run into anything. 
If I come in too hot, you guys are going to get some front row action on the back of the 63 of Pallet Junior Hardtop. It's going to be smashed up. we got a couple of 6 by 6s laid here to stop us in a trash can. And I think they put on the sides of the uh, interstate. We should probably fill that trash can full of water, though. As you can see, we got her in here. We didn't smash up the front end, so it's a win right there. It stinks something fierce under the hood once you get it running, so I'm guessing all that critter fuzz and dust, whatever decaying matters on there is real unpleasant. So we should probably do a little pressure washing on that engine once we get things uh, fine-tuned. When you put it in gear, it is a little bit slow, so I feel like, yeah, everything's a little bit slow around here. No comment. So we should probably put a little juice in the tranny. Let's put her up on the hoist and uh, take a look at the bottom side and see if we can not get some brakes on this thing. Let's get a look at the bottom side of this thing. See what that tells us. Oh, looks like that bumper's been into a few things, if you know what I mean. It's got the dual horn options, right and left. A little grass under here. It looks like somebody put some new shocks on it when they remanufactured the rest of the vehicle. Even did both sides. What a deal. The rubbers ain't even all blown out on the sway bar. Plus it's got a sway bar. So that's uh, positive. So if you want to lower one of these things, um, there's probably a few different options. You could uh, either cut out this pocket and move it down and that would move everything up. Well, they probably sell a dropped spindle or a dropped upright as they call it. Looks like it's got upper and lower ball joints. It doesn't have king pins. I think uh, like a 54 Chevy would have king pins. So that's an option, but this thing has got to be lower. That's probably what would be the cheapest way to do is just cut this pocket out, put a spacer in there, weld the pocket back in. Bada bing, bada boom. You got to pay money for uh, dropped uprights. Some of these cars, I think you could flip them from side to side and upside down or something, but I don't know what those were. New uh, grease circ on this tie rod end. Almost looks like somebody maybe greased it at one point. Looks like got a little oil leak on the oil pump. It's got a motivator oil filter. The old MP1 meets all new car warranty requirements. The motivator. Never heard of one of them before. I'm guessing this transmission is air-cooled. That's probably what is a vent. Also looks like a really good hole for mice to crawl in and out of. There is a little inspection cover down here, so if this thing would have been stuck, thankfully it's not, we could have pried on it. Looks like the oil pan gasket or the rear main is already weeping a bit on us. Or maybe that was from when we were spraying Luby Doob up there. Oh, what's that? Is that a reman Ford starter? Or just a, uh, well, there it went. It said FOMOCO on it before I was messing with it. Oh, the shocks are Monroe's even. Heck of a deal. Oh, man. Those hoses look real brittle. Good luck with that. All the undercoating is, it's still there, but it's about ready to fall off. That undercoating really saves on these cars. This body mount is... Bluetooth on one side, but the important part, I guess, if there is such a thing, is there. A little uh, plumber's tape, I call it. It doesn't even hold the muffler. It's just kind of as a spacer. This body mount's gone. This one's not far behind the dirt that's in there is still holding it together. Could use some inner rockers. That body mount, best one thus far. It does have a regular drive shaft. It doesn't have an enclosed torque tube. I think those went away in like 48 on Fords. I guess Mercury's are about the same. Again, a lot of undercoating. She's pretty loose. This must be the seat belts. They must be add-ons, not factory stuff. Muffler. It's warm. It's kind of doing muffler things, but she's uh, got a soggy bottom, boys. Do her as well. Yep, I just made the car a lot louder. Exhaust hanger. Yep, she's shot as well. We'll put some number nine wire around that and fix her up real good. This has been Spotlight on the number nine wire. Until next time, this is Quick Dick McDick reminding you a man will never get tired of pulling on his number nine wire. Be good as new. 
The nine inch did not come out until 1957. This being a 54 is three years too early. Somebody could have swapped one in here. I don't know what they call this, but it's Ford's early version of the open driveline differential. Park brake cable's still there. These floors up here all look pretty good. Like I said, I think that undercoating really saved on them. But body mounts are just trash. They must have, oh yeah, that's why. You can see how the dirt can get in at the top there, right there. And there probably was like a clean out hole on the bottom, but when they undercoated it, they covered said clean out hole. And then they just got filled full of dirt. Starting with the front one, because that one got the dirt first from the wheel and just move their way back. So that's pretty awesome. This rocker, we already knew about that. She's pretty toasty, toasty. Put it in me, Scott. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty. It's interesting, it's got bump stops back here and bump stops in the center where they usually are. I've never seen where it's got multiple bump stop locations, so that's new. I was looking underneath and I was taking that wheel out and I thought this was all new sheet metal. I thought, ah, somebody's patched the floors and poorly, but no, that's just really nice metal there that's underneath this undercoating. So if a guy spent a weekend dragging undercoating off and scuffing this thing up, shooting it, the floors are really, really solid in this thing. There's a little rust right there in front of the rear wheel. But yeah, if you did some body mounts and some rockers, she's uh, really solid. Hey! Let's really stink up the shop. Pull that drain plug. Uh oh, is that rust up there? Oh yeah, that's the carpet. It needs a trunk floor. And there's the spare tire. I could hear that crunching around in there so I knew that was bad. Again, body mount back here is shot. The inner quarter, eh, it probably needs replacing. Somebody backed into something right there, it looks like. And then, yeah, the lower quarters are a little squishy. I think they were squishy the first time somebody rebuilt this car and they just kind of mudded them in. It did have a chrome tip on it at one point, but chrome didn't hold up so well. I also noticed on these leaf springs, there's a little aftermarket overload action going on here. Those are definitely not factory original i guess the thought behind those is as the leaf spring flattens out it puts tension on those and helps i guess and usually when that's involved there's a hitch somewhere but i don't see a hitch maybe somebody took it off it'd be a shame to put a hitch and cover up that sweet bumper okay i guess uh no big surprises under here other than body mounts are shot and the floors are surprisingly nice so now we're gonna try to pull the brake bleeders. That one looks new. Somebody replaced that. This one, again, not quite as good looking, but still got a lot of that zinc coating on it. We're gonna pull those out. See if we can get some brake juice down here. Oh yeah, somebody's just messing with those. Put new bleeders in it from the last time they messed with it. So I'm gonna crack all of those and uh, see what we can get no surprise those all came out flawlessly so those have been messed with before the back two even had a little bit of fluid behind them i mean like they were damp so maybe there's a chance that uh we'll get some brakes so you're telling me there's a chance i'd rather have the fronts working than the rears for multiple reasons but let's see if we can't finish getting the lid off of this fruit jar up front here and uh get some brakes working Cause this little guy is ready to go for a ride, aren't you? Okay, I was thinking about taking this cap off. I put a pipe wrench on it, and then I thought about giving it some heat. Well, the rubber seals that are in here are probably shot anyway, but if we heat it up, we risk the chance of ruining even more. I don't have a different cap for this that I am aware of, and this master cylinder is probably shot. So let's just not waste our time, and let's just dump some fluid in there. See if we can get some breaks out of the deal. Well, that's pretty cool. They got a rubber hose coming right off the master cylinder, other than the fact that instead of just putting three hoses on the car, you gotta put four now. All right, let's put some fluid in. Let's see if we can't spill. So we got our master cylinder topped off. The theory here is I've got all of the brake bleeders open and gravity is gonna wanna 
push that fluid down and push the air out, which is we're trying to get out of the system is air and fluid in there because air is compressible, brake fluid is not. So we're gonna raise it up in the air, wait for fluid to run out of each one of these bleeders, and we should have brakes. I don't have very good luck with this gravity feed and stuff, especially on old brakes, but hey, we'll give her a whirl, see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. The passenger side rear brake bleeder is getting some fluid, and that is the furthest away from the master cylinder, so that's looking good. However, she is bone dry on the driver's side rear. And in theory, the driver's front is the closest. That one should be getting fluid first. Nothing there. And nothing on the passenger side, so that is strange. Why would we be getting brake fluid to the furthest wheel away from the master cylinder? Who knows? Now we uh, go have a sandwich and we wait. I guess that's the game we play. Fun times. Well, we play the waiting game, trying to get fluid to come out of those bleeders. Let's take our magnet and do a little magnet fishing. Oh, that is so gross. Isn't it, Duff? You probably love it because you are a disgusting dog. So where do you suppose that thing went in at? Ugh. Who knows what we're going to find? Probably a wealth of 10 millimeter sockets. Blah. Are you wondering what I'm doing? We're trying to find a spark plug and a spark plug socket. You don't believe me, do you? I'm fine without the spark plug. I'm actually fine without the socket too, but it would be kind of nice to have that back. Nothing. I love how you're content with watching me play in the floor drain. Just like you folks are. You know what we're gonna find. Nothing good. We'll find the uh, spark plug, but not find the socket. Isn't there entire YouTube channels just on people finding crap in rivers? Yeah, I'm sure those are fake. Cause like, who throws a gun into a river? And doesn't go back for it. RIP 1316 spark plug socket. H10C champion spark plug. I can't believe they haven't found a bolt or anything. Is this thing even magnetic? Well, that's why. It's so full of crap. All right. We are uh, pissing up a rope here, as they say. That was fun, just kidding, it was not. Oh my gosh, you're actually gonna use your dog bed for once? What a guy. That's about the luck I have with uh, going regular fishing too, so no surprise. Hopefully we got some brake fluid coming out there, otherwise we're just gonna have to divulge in some sandwiches and wait it out. Just kidding, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We'll uh, force that fluid through one way or another. Well, if you haven't figured this out about me, I usually have the patience of a three-year-old waiting in line at Disney World. So I went and played with the pedal a little bit. It just didn't feel like anything. So I think what happened was the piston in the master cylinder, when it was stuck, pushed it in, and the spring in there and the rust and the stickiness, and it didn't return. And I was right. So you could see all the rust that fell out of that thing. Or you can't. There it is. Right down there. After I pulled Das Boot off. Yeah, she's uh, she's real rusty in there. So I think we're just gonna pull this thing off. See if we can't revive it on the bench. Without making a mess. Who am I kidding? So we gotta pull this fitting off the end here. And then uh, that banjo fitting will come off and the hose will come off and it's not gonna break. It is not gonna break. Another thing I found was there's two similar 5 16 fine thread bolts. Another fine thread bolt that's you know, a hole for a safety wire in there. And then somebody just rammed a 5 16 coarse thread in there. So somebody's been in here before. All right, I'm gonna pull this thing off. We'll put it on the bench and blow it apart. See if we can't learn something. That's what it's all about. Everybody's here to learn and make fun of me and watch me hurt myself and uh, 
go through the misery of getting old cars running. Yay! I love this stuff. All right, let's see what kind of sediment we got stuck in the backside. Oh yeah, a lot of rust. There should be a snap ring of sorts in there. What's your problem? I know, get a new one. People want to see us fix the old trash though. We need some more light over here. Duff, you wanna go grab me a Cyclops? That'd be great. No? Okay, guess I'll do it myself. So there's a little snap ring in here. That's gonna hold that washer behind it, but uh, it don't wanna move. And I don't blame it. Come on now. I don't know how we're gonna get that out of there. That is an unhappy clip. If it breaks, there's gonna be an unhappy Morski because I don't have anything like that around. Well, let's get this pointy sucker out so I can really hurt myself. Hey, 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 hey. now we're talking. There we go. Now this washer should come out of there. How are we gonna do that? Well placed taps. No, not the funeral music kind. Got it. I don't know what's rolling around in there, but yeah, that piston's definitely stuck in. So I'm gonna spray some lube in there. And we'll try to clean that bore up a little bit. And then we're gonna have to try putting pressure from this side. Hopefully it comes out. Unless it goes straight through and we can just tap her. Just tap, tap, tap her. Ooh. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a roo. That ain't possible, is it? We're gonna find out. It's shot anyway, right? There's definitely some spring action there. Boy, I think it moved. Use Mojo's PB here. Get the old walking players to assist. Maybe we can get some more downforce. There. Just about. Just the tip. I suppose we can pull that piston out of there. Nope. Oh, come on, meow. Hurry up, meow. Maybe we'll get some vice action in here. Wowza! Wowza! Oh boy. I always want your bench clean so you can figure out which parts just came out of there and uh, which parts were from another project. I think that's another project. What size is our cup? B cups? Just kidding. One inch. Oh, that was the washer we took out earlier. I think we mangled that. And there's our piston. So now we gotta clean this guy up, or gal, whatever this master cylinder identifies as, and see if we can't uh, get her to start pumping fluid again and figure out how to put it all back together. Fantastic. Okay, Grandpa would always use a uh, brake cleaner for doing this, but I don't know. I think any type of uh, lubricant or oil should be just fine. I think we need to clamp that in a little better. So we're gonna take our stones, spin them back and forth in there, try to clean it up, see what she looks like. See what's worth cleaning up. Let's see how pitted up, ooh. Well, maybe we just gotta wipe it out. Nah, she's pretty pitted up on the bottom there. Let's take our dirty old rag, cram that in there. 
Yeah, all the water sits at the bottom. She's, she's pretty pitted up. But it's all we got. It's only your brakes, no big deal. Using some of the witness marks on some of this stuff, like you can see those six holes were marked on that cup. And you can see the center of this cup here had a mark from that guy there with the hole in the center. And then you can see that was the thing that I whaled the snot out of with the uh, punch. So that was at the far end. And then this spring sat in there like that. And that little guy went in there like that. I've never seen where it's got two different sets of springs in there. But. So that's how it goes back together. But I think before I put it back together, we're going to see if we can't get the uh, lid off of it. This way we're not going to wreck anything rubber in there because everything's out of it. And you don't want to wreck your rubber. So let's uh, get some heat. See if we can't get that off there. Hoping a little bit of heat helps us get the corrosion out between the cast iron and this aluminum and we can get that lid off. Walk it right out of there. Hey, a little heat goes a long ways. If only I'd have done that before I snapped that X off. Probably not good to breathe in. All right, on that note, that master cylinder has got to cool down before we can put any of those rubber components back together. So we're gonna get back at this tomorrow because it's too late to go for a drive in our car with no headlights and no brakes. So we're gonna let that cool off, put that back together tomorrow. Hopefully we can get some brakes out of that thing. I'm not promising anything. And uh, if we do, they're probably not gonna be that great. And uh, we're probably not gonna be that safe. I mean, they're gonna be fine. I'm sure the wheel cylinders are all like brand new inside too. They don't look anything like the inside of that uh, master cylinder. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Got the master cylinder on, we got her full of fluid. Look at that, I just took a bolt, a couple of washers and a nut. We got ourselves a master cylinder cap again that's probably gonna leak, but let's be honest, that master cylinder is on its way out anywho. So let's lift this thing up in the air. See if we can't get some fluid to come out of the old bleeder screws. Yeah, doesn't look very promising. Per usual, we are having no luck with brakes. We got fluid in our master cylinder. We cracked all of our bleeders, nothing. I tried pushing fluid in the bleeders up the other way. And guess what? It don't go up there. So I pulled the brake hose on this left front off and she's plugged up tight. I got a bunch of brake hoses around nothing with the right ends to make work for this. So we're gonna either have to drive it without brakes or we're gonna have to wait till we can get some hoses. And it's like, well, if we do hoses and we're waiting on parts, we might as well get a master, we might as well do wheel cylinders. I don't know. Then you wanna do shoes and turn the drums, and wheel bearings, yada, yada, yada. So I haven't decided what we're gonna do yet, but I did notice this thing is stamped Senator Farm Tire. I don't know if I showed you guys that earlier, but so I don't know if this was a used tire and they stamp it farm tire, like you can only use it for farm service after they found some flaw in it or what. All right, we're gonna go do something else for the rest of the night. Figure out if we're gonna order parts, if we can afford brake parts on the Rock Auto and to wait another week and get another project done to get ahead of this one. Or if we're just gonna go for a nice slow test drive. I've driven cars without brakes before, but being an automatic and being as nice as this is, I'd hate to put this one in the rhubarb or heaven forbid run into something else with uh, those nice Dagmars up front and ding those up. So I'm probably gonna end up waiting for parts. So it might be a while before we get back to this one. Who knows? Maybe Duff will get together with old Tiffany and we'll do something different. I don't know. What do you think, pal? 
He's like, just get something running so we can go for RIDEs. It's always something. It's always brakes. And they can't just all use the same brake stuff, so. Oh well, what do you do? All right, we're back on the uh, Mercury after a couple month hiatus. We got all the old tires dismounted. You know what that means. We got the, uh, we got the carb cooking away in the ultrasonic cleaner for a rebuild. We got the wheels all blasted. Now we're gonna give them a shot of some primer and some red paint so those can go back on. But like I said, carbs off, wheels are off. Tech tip of the day, these Ford hinges are super crappy. I don't know if I told you earlier in the video, but pickups, cars, all of them were just crap. So get yourself one of these adjustable push rods. I think this one came from the uh, whole Amazonia. Otherwise this hood sits about here. So you put that in there and you get way more light, way more headroom. All right, let's get this thing up in the air and start doing some brakes. So just as I expected, these brakes are like brand freaking new. What is it? Canada WE98FE Relined. So it's got shoes on it that have like hardly any miles on it. Looks like they clean up the adjuster. It's nice and loose. Everything's in really good shape. So we just stuck a new wheel cylinder in it. Stuck a new hose on it. Uh, wheel bearing grease looks like brand new. So we're gonna slam this all back together. And uh, hopefully everything works A-OK. -okay. The inside of the drum, I don't know, they must have turned them that or they were in super good shape. So everything's gonna be freaking mint. This thing's gonna be stopping on a dime in no time. Only three more to do. Easy peasy lemon squeezy if there's no surprises. Brakes are pretty boring, ain't they, pal? I would concur. So I think before somebody sold this thing to Ralph, the previous owner, I think they went through all the brakes because they look like brand new drums, brand new shoes, even all the uh, hardware and stuff like new. And then the uh, master or wheel cylinders, excuse me, they got some surface rust on them, but. They're like as clean inside as I have ever seen. So I'm pretty sure these were all brand new. I'm sure the seals have dried up since then, but yeah, these things were in really good shape. They probably would have been fine. Maybe put some kits in them or clean them up, but new stuff was pretty cheap. So since we're in there, we might as well do her up. Shoes look really good, drums look really good. So that's awesome. But anyway, since we're done with brakes, got the carb all done up. Ready to go on there. These uh, ultrasonic cleaners are good. Heat this thing up to whatever, 70 degrees Celsius, so like 198,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you set the old buzz into place, the old ultrasonicness. These things come out really awesome, so. She was pretty gooey inside there. Uh, yeah, it ran all right before it's gonna run. Way good now. We gotta adjust. The uh, height situation. Oh yeah, let me show you the wheels. So if you ever need somebody to blast some wheels in your Southeast North Dakota, go to Job Erection. Uh, they're right in winter here. Dropped these wheels off yesterday at noon and by 
God, what time was it? 3 4 o'clock. They dropped them back up, delivered them. So those guys are awesome to work with. Super quick turnaround time. I don't know how big of projects they blast. I've only had them do wheels, but I know guys have had them do entire frames. And they're they're super reasonably priced and they're super fast turnaround. And guess what? I ran out of red paint. I got those two done. But uh, luckily I only did the outside first because I knew we were gonna be short of paint, which all you're gonna see is about this much of the rim when we get hubcaps on it. Uh, I tried two cans of International Red, and they were both shot. One was even new, but pretty old. And then we tried, I think it was Krylon. So it's Krylon Red. But it should be good enough. You can always touch them up. I'm lazy. Didn't do the uh, hoop or the inside. We don't care, right? Did the same thing on those. So, those are ready to uh, put valve stems in and mount up with our brand new 215 75s, I think we got. Got some dime whites off the uh, old Amazonia. They're classics. You can tell because the way that they are. What are these things? Oh, they're the toenails like that pudding feller uses. The tornails. You know why we use them, Duff? Because they're cheap. So, I think they're 215.75s, aren't they, pal? Yep, 215.75s. Same as what was on there. No, those aren't going on there. So we're going to get those mounted up. But we got to get the uh, attitude altitude both adjusted so we got these springs these are off of a like 92 ford windstar these are the uh, same spring rate just a little bit shorter than the factory ones so you should have the factory ride and it gets them a little bit lower so it's basically the same thing as if you took bought some brand new ones of those and then cut them down a little bit only they're super cheap then we got some two inch blocks for the rear still got to put our master cylinder on got some new shocks but we're gonna get these in there, split the ball joints, put those in there. Because this is gonna kind of dictate ride height, so then we're gonna see if these are gonna work for us. Duff is bored with the old Mercury. He knows the warmest spot in the shop, right where the uh, furnace blows on him. You're no dummy, are you? All right, let's do some, let's spring into action here. One side done, nothing to it. Just gotta disconnect the sway bar, disconnect the brake hose, and then take the nut off this upper ball joint and then whack it with a uh, hammer so you don't screw nothing up there. And then drop her down. I had to get Mojo over here to help me get her back up in place, but probably could've got it by yourself. We needed to, no thanks to Duff there. Yeah, pretty easy. Here you can see Mojo even pointed out, he goes, that one's shorter. Yeah. Just a little bit. So, uh, at what? Standard spring height, whatever you want to call it. Looks like she's, oh man, four inches shorter. So, in theory, we're going to get pretty close to that much in drop. Although, this thing's going to be a little bit sagged out compared to this one. And then where it sits in the control arm out versus in, yada, yada, yada. You got to make sure that you put the flat side of the spring up. And then there's a pocket in the lower control arm for the pigtail and spring to go into. Otherwise, uh, yeah, nothing to it. Here we go, let's do the other one. There you have it. Brakes are hooked back up. We still got to bleed them. Well, we still got to put a master on there too. But sway bar's hooked up. Got our cotter keys back in our upper ball joints. Springs in there. Ready to uh, set this end down on the ground. I think I'm going to do, I don't know. I want to set her on the ground and see where we're at with the rear because I feel like the back of the car was already a little bit too low. So we'll see where we're at. 
and then uh, adjust the rear from there if we got to get you know one inch blocks instead of twos or whatever who am i kidding we're gonna put the twos on anyway but oh we gotta put our new shocks in there yet hopefully our stock height shocks are gonna work it should because our bump stop location is still in the same spot as it always was so we, we maybe lost a little bit of travel and i know there's a bunch of you uh Dwayne's out there just or should we stop calling them Dwayne's or calling them Joe's or Lagakis? A bunch of you Joe's out there, they're like, oh, lowered cars. I hate lowered cars. You can't drive them, yada, yada. If you look at pretty much any advertising for any car, like say the 1964 Cadillac, if you look at the advertising for that car, like the drawings, those cars are like laid out on the ground because even GM knew in 1964 or Ford in 1957, whoever knew that those cars needed to be low to look good and so that's what they did in the advertising and that's what those people were buying those cars based on that's my opinion so i don't want to hear you complaining because guess what i've sold a lot of cars lord cars sell perfect and you can always raise this car back up if you really wanted to buy it i like low cars low cars sell deal with it don't even comment down below joe all right let's put some shocks on all right, we got our new shocks installed. You know, I buy shocks based on the color. Black shocks are the way to go. You know, you don't notice them. But it looks like it had some pretty uh, low mileage Monroe, Monroe Maddox on there. I don't know if there's a date on these things or not. But anyway, I'm pretty sure when they did brakes or uh, restored this car, those were new. So they're still probably 30 years old, but they'd have probably been fine. I still got some rebound in them. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. I guess some shocks aren't supposed to uh, rebound, as I call it, or extend on their own. But got the front ones done. Now I think we're gonna uh, swap out a master cylinder. Of course, I forgot to get this hose because why would there be a hose from the master cylinder down to the uh, combination valve? I think is what it says. But anyway, we're gonna get that swapped out and go from there. We got our master installed. We got everything hooked up. We got it filled up. Uh, I'm gonna go lift her up in the air and crack the bleeders. Hopefully it gravity feeds, never works for me. I mean, it did twice now, but we're gonna try that. I took that hose out in between here cause you know, it's a rubber and it fails. And the reason that hose is there is so that when the body and frame flex in different directions, that uh, rubber hose takes that up. And that's why I made this steel line basically it's going to do the same thing. That's what these coils are here for. If you ever see a car, well, a lot of cars, when they get the master cylinder, they got those coils underneath them. And those coils are to take up that flex in between the uh, body and the frame. It was super handy with this one because this hose has essentially a regular uh, 3 16 line on each end. So nice work on that. I would have put a new one on, but I forgot to order one. And now if I order one now, it'll be... Probably a week before it gets here, so fixed it. Redneck ingenuity. I'm gonna go underneath, hook that pedal up, and uh, hopefully get some bleeding done. And then we just got everything else. All right, I don't know if I showed you the bottom of this thing. I don't, did we have it on the hoist first? When we got her running? I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna drop that tank down and clean it out. Hopefully it survives or is uh, salvageable. But look at this, they got safety wire. Going right through the bolts holding in there. Freaking high end stuff. They got a drain. What are the odds if we uh, pull that out, anything's gonna come out? Never mind that the floor is uh, rotted out where the gas tank straps hook to. All right. Let's uh, pull that drain plug and see what happens. Do we dare? Ugh. I suppose we got to, huh? Hopefully, we don't strip nothing out. Looks like a 10 millimeter, 11 millimeter, 12 point fits on there. Good and tight. Okay, it didn't fit as tight as I was hoping. We're going straight to the locking players. I'm guessing this is soldered in. 
I don't want to give it some heat, but I'm worried about what might be inside. It might still be flammable after 30 years. I don't want to break the solder though. Oh. gotta be empty. Ah, but then if I heat it, it's gonna probably melt that solder. I just felt good away about this. I need one of them inductive heaters. There we go. Think? What's it doing, Duff? Oh yeah, I think. Probably get our drain pan, even though I don't think there's gonna be anything in there. See, there's about a 4% chance any liquid comes out. Oh my gosh, I was wrong. And it's running down my sleeve. What are the odds that stuff's still flammable? Oh, she's ripe. Poke this in there, we're gonna get full flow. All right. Hopefully our catch pan's got enough room to hold it all. We'll use the old transmission jack to drop her down. Really all that's left is the filler neck and fuel sending wire. That's really all I'm worried about is the wire. The neck is all steel it looks like, so that should just sneak right out of there. Right. A little tension on her. I got the straps pretty much loose here. hung up on the uh, filler neck. For some reason. Are you gonna take the cap off or what? Yeah. There's a big grommet on the filler neck. So I'm gonna have to pop that off there, I think. That right, grommet is off. There we go. Now I just got the sending unit wire. Spade clip. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's go uh, rinse this thing out. Well, yeah, as these bad boys come out. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Hmm. What's it gonna be? A new gasket is what it's going to be. Well, uh, that doesn't move very well, and the float is MIA. So I'm guessing our sending unit is shot. It don't look much better. Oh boy. Oh boy. It ain't looking good. What is this? I'm guessing somebody dropped that down the fuel filler neck. Somebody's kid playing a joke or messing around. But I don't feel like that should have been in there. It's not going to be magnetic, so I don't know if I'm going to pick it up, but here is what's left of our float. Oh man. I don't think there's any save in this guy. I'll give you a little peek of what we got going on in there. It, uh, it ain't looking good for the home team. I think we're just gonna have to see if we can source a new one. I feel like when I looked, there was some misleading stuff on the internet that Mercury's were different. They didn't repop a Mercury, but that was a 
15 year old thread now they repop mercury but anyway you can maybe send this in and and somebody's got something some caustic cleaner i don't know i don't think evapor rust would cut it you'd have to get a ton of it and the thing about fuel tanks is i hate dealing with them because you fight them forever tooth and nail tooth and nail means when uh you're fighting like an animal tooth and nail fighting with everything the good lord give you but anyway rusty tanks i hate dealing with them especially like when they're available so we're gonna see if we can get one for this thing and go from there but uh, i think for now we're just gonna have to use a boat tank because uh, i don't have a good way to clean this up pressure wash and get a, a good amount of that sludge and then we could evapor rust it but i feel like we're just gonna be fighting the forever so we ain't getting a tank not this weekend i guess we'll uh put shocks on or do brakes or i don't know maybe put a carb on i'm gonna have a sandwich and uh see what comes next maybe get on the old google box guess a uh, fuel tank coming because we need one just had a, a tiffany here uh i don't know if it's a, if, if it was her or not she wasn't here but anywho i had a heck of a time getting the wheels in and out of there so i was like man what are we gonna do when we put lowering blocks it'll be harder to get them in and out so anywho i was taking these bottom bolts out of these shocks and the whole rear end dropped down about three inches these shocks are too short and that's why the rear end wouldn't drop down far enough. Whoever put these in sure is silly. Which is funny because the front ones look like new, but these ones are not as good of shape. But anywho, hopefully our new Gabriel Classics got a little bit more stroke to them. You don't want to be short stroking the rear end in your Merc or short stroking any rear ends. So we're going to put those uh, shocks in there and see what happens. And if we gotta get longer shocks, we're gonna get longer shocks because we can't be having it where you can't swap the rear end. I had to jack the whole one side of the car up and then leave this side hanging and drop it. It, it's, it was no good. If you had to swap these on the road, it would have been no bueno. All right, furnace is kicking on. I'm gonna kick it in gear. Bachman Turner Overdrive. Shocks are all in. These aren't as long as I'd like them to be, but they're still significantly longer. We, we're missing about a half inch of travel. So, and that could just be worn out bushings and sagged out springs, you know? Saggy rear ends. It's a, it's a thing with old girls like this. Anyway, we're gonna change some oil. Look where they put the drain plug. I mean, that is, that is ideal. Just wedge it right up against the cross member. I'm sure we're not gonna have any difficulties getting that out or oil hitting that cross member. Should be a fast drainer though, you know, I mean, that's like an inch and a quarter plug. Here goes nothing. Hopefully there's no water on the bottom of it. Just kidding, I don't really care. How big is that monstrosity? Inch and a sixteenth? What a guess. Oh, nope, she's inch and an eighth. I don't think you could, look at that. You can't even get a box end wrench in there. Wow, what a deal, Ford, what a deal. Good thing Jiffy Lube didn't crank her to the moon. Okay, where does this pan gotta be so I don't make a mess? Ooh, hit the pan. What a deal! Barely hit the cross member. Oh, you planned that out well, Ford. Look at that. Whole thing drained in like four and a half seconds. That's the beauty of have a one inch drain hole versus a half inch. Twice as fast, who'd have thought? So this thing should have a canister or cartridge type oil filter, but it's got a spin on, so I don't know if somebody's converted or what, but look at that, a motivator. The MP1 meets all new car warranty requirements. You can tell that's a 1990 one, two, three filter because of the old pink and blue. Man, of those great times. Remember the uh, snowmobile suits of that vintage and the snowmobiles in general? Oh, great times, the old. Indy Light Deluxes and the Indy 500s, wild. Anyway, look at this. We caught one. Always check to make sure that the seal comes with your uh, oil filter. If I'd have just spun that on, we'd have doubled up that seal and blown oil everywhere. Well, probably not everywhere because this thing probably doesn't have all kinds of oil pressure, but if you had something with good oil pressure, it definitely would. Don't ask me how I know, and I know you've done that as well. 
We're gonna stick a Hastings LF-115 on it. I was looking at these in the old Rock Auto, and now they call a Hastings a B2 now. I think guess Hastings and Baldwin are together, which I liked both Baldwin and Hastings and Wicks. I like them all, but I don't know if you can get a good old Hastings anymore if they quit making them or what. Comment down below if you know what's going on with Hastings, if they buddied up with Baldwin or what's going on there. Anyway, this might be like my sandwiches, going the, going the ways of the dodo bird. All right, I'm gonna put a little random oil in this and spin her on there. Just wanted to give you the tech tip of the day. Always check to make sure that that seal comes off with the filter. It seems to only be a problem with your cheap filters like your motivators, hence why you probably can't get them anymore. Never really have a problem with a Hastings or a Wix or a Baldwin. All right, I'm gonna finish my oil change. Oil change is complete. I definitely used vintage oil. Look at this, even Quaker State, only because it was in the car. I don't know what weight it is, it's something W30, so I assumed it was 10W30, so then I grabbed a couple things of mobile. Look at that, they don't even match. And then this thing of mobile, which clearly doesn't match, but it saves gas, so we're going for economy here. So we stuck uh, one quart of uh, 530 in there as well. Somebody's probably collecting these and screaming at home, I can't believe you dumped those in that car. Well, you know, it's what we have. It's four gasoline engines, so good thing this thing burns gasoline. Or whatever tar was in that tank, anyway. Okay, back at her. Also, uh, we've had these bleeders cracked for several hours now. There's no cap on the master cylinder, and we're not getting any fluid to come out of them, so... That just goes to show you how uh, excellent my gravity bleeding skills are. So I think we're gonna just tighten all those up and do the old reverse bleed like we usually do. Gravity bleed. Doesn't work for us. Well, I think it's about time we address, what is this, the elephant in the room? The monkey in the room? Anyway, flexi hoses, be gone. All right, radiator hoses are on. The low radiator hose really bit the big one. Let me tell you why. The outlet on the bottom of the radiator is two inch. The outlet on the water pump, inch and three quarter. So that hose had to neck up. Well, the factory hose, all of them on Rock Auto should be inch and three quarter, inch and three quarter. I could not stretch it over that for the life of me. However, in my stash of radiator hoses. I had a extra radiator hose, a lower for a 74 Ford F350 with a 390 two wheel drive. Well, they did not make a four wheel drive F350 in 1974. Your worthless knowledge of the day. Uh, they didn't for quite some years. You'd have to ask uh, one of those Cooperstown fellers when it was. But anyway, that hose was two inch and I took a chunk of Another inch and three quarter hose I had and cut it off, put it in there and used it as a bushing, sleeve, whatever you want to call it. And that thing fits in there real nice. So we got rid of the ugly uh, flexi hoses. We got another radiator hose to our add to our collection. We just swapped it out. We took the stock one for this. So I don't know if somebody swapped this radiator out at one time, if it's out of a pickup or if who knows what the deal is. It looks strikingly similar to like a 53 to 56 Ford pickup, which maybe Ford use the same radiators and cars and pickups, but anyway, adapt and overcome. Don't submit to the flexi hose radiator life. Flex, yeah, ra radiate, flexi, I, you know what I'm saying. So we got that done. We're gonna top her off with some coolant and uh, continue on this journey of amazingness with 
sunshine here, whatever we're calling this dang thing. Sunshine. Sunshine. While we're fiddling with our rubbers here, I put two new heater hoses on, topped off the coolant, put a new belt on it, uh, a new fuel filter and fuel hose. I was gonna put a fuel pump in, but that's where this debacle started. So 54 Merc. They don't offer one on the Rock Auto. I reached out to the Y Block guy on Instagram. He knows Y Blocks. He makes makes them go real fast in the salt flats. Go check him out. And he says, yeah, them early ones are oddballs. He says, good luck. I says, all right. They offer one for a 55. It's got the vacuum pump on it. Perfect. That should work, right? Uh, no. It's got a totally different freaking, freaking arm on it. This one's, well, there you go. You can kind of see her like that. You need to flip it up the other way. That ain't gonna work. So the only option would be to take the diaphragm out of this one and put it in that one, but of course the uh, diaphragms are different. The other thing is I could knock the push rod out of this one and try to put it in that one, but if that doesn't work, then I got two pieces of crap. And this is off of a 64 Ford F100 with a 292. And there again, that push rod is completely different. So I got, you know, a bunch of paperweights. I guess we're going to have to go buy some more Y blocks to uh, revive. Because we're not going to send them back because we're way too lazy for that. On that note, uh, it's uh, just about midnight. So I'm going to wrap her up there. I guess since we don't have a fuel tank, we're just going to put a boat tank and electric pump for now and call her good. Do a little research on the interwebs. All it is is just a, a little rubber diaphragm, both for the vacuum pump and for the fuel pump. You just take those six bolts out. So hopefully I can find some aftermarket resource that we can just get those. Because, you know, back in the day, you could just rebuild a fuel pump. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Well, these ones got this metal band on it. Those are non-serviceable. But that's where we're at. Story of my life. I did get a tank ordered. It's not gonna be here in time, so yeah, awesome. And it was 500 bucks, so not cheap. Always pick the oddest car to work on. You know, don't pick a 55 Chevy or a, I don't know, 34 Ford or a 69 Charger. Pick a 54 Mercury, you'll love your life. All right, see you in the morning. What do we decide to work on now? Yeah, that's right. Spark plug wires. I had to lift this thing up on the hoist because there's these clamps with these rubber boots that have turned to jello and all this other stuff. Look at that. What a deal. So I can uh, tell you most of that stuff ain't going back together. We're just going to put the wires on there unless we get real ambitious. But we're running out of time here. So let's put a new cap and rotor and plugs and wires on this thing. Get her back together so we can get this thing on the road. All right, just wanted to give you an update on how miserable these were. It probably took us a solid 45 minutes just to get these wires off because they run around the back side of the engine and there's two bolts that were hidden that hold them and then a bolt on each side of the engine that was hidden and we had to pull the starter off, but we didn't have to pull the starter off. Just, they just make me hate my life, so. It's done, well not done, it's off. It's gonna go together way easier because it's gonna be way less complicated and I already did it, so. Now we're gonna do some plug wires and plugs. You know, the routine. Chin says this video's getting pretty long, so we ain't really filming much anymore. You know, I got uh, my Chip Foos crew in the background just doing all the work, because that's what we like to do around here. Back at it, crew. I wish I had a crew, that would be great. But nope, I got you. Just hanging out, cracking the whip. Yeah. Well, Duffel up, I guess, you ready to go for an R-I-D-E? Yeah, he can spell. So we got ourselves a little electric clicky clack fuel pump down there. We got our custom made spark plug wires in there. These new ones got straight boots, so they don't lay out as nice as the original ones. Those original ones had Ford scripted on them. Freaking furnace. So I'm pretty sure those were original. We got ourselves a little inline clear fuel filter, because guess what? We blew out the fuel line, but uh, Auto City Classics, I think is what it's called, out of a Isanti, Isanti, somewhere in Minnesota. We call it the cities here in Podunk, but uh, I think I ordered that tank on Wednesday night. Friday morning it showed up. And uh, yeah, we gotta get this thing for a ride so we can get the 
content to Chin so he can edit it and get it to you folks by Monday. So, yeah. Auto City Classics, check them out. I think they do a lot of radiators and glass and fuel tanks. Quick turnaround, fit perfect. We got our air cleaner bag on. We got our battery in there. Fixer Auto is our battery sponsor this week. We got our white walls cleaned up. Use our rubber stripper. No, not that kind of stripper that you used to on Saturday night. The rubber stripper wheel from 3M that goes on our air drill. Clean those up real good. Cleaned up our hubcaps kind of good. We should probably take some 4 rot steel wool and clean them up. Yeah, she's pretty much ready to go. When I was putting the uh, spare parts in the trunk, so if somebody ever wants to do all the uh, ignition or spark plug wires the way they should be, I noticed there's a wire going up there. What's that for? This thing's got a factory trunk light in it. How neat is that? How neat is that? And look at these hood hinges. Instead of just your regular curved hinge, these things got like a scissor type hinge on them. What a deal. These things were all class in uh, 1954. The old Mercury Monterey. We got some license plates on her. We got her fired up. You could tell by all the uh, mouse poo that flew out onto the skid steer. I don't know why that didn't fly out the first time we had it running. Maybe we hit a couple higher RPMs this time. You are excited, aren't you? All right, like I said, we are running out of time. I would like to do some more cleaning on the interior, maybe polish some bright work. The back end, I, uh, two inches I think would be too much. You could use an inch. I don't have one inch blocks. We could machine those down. Like I said, we are out of time. Some skirts would be awesome on the back. Let's take this thing for a rip. I think it's in the single digits this morning, so I'm gonna bundle up. Duff loves this weather, so he ain't bundling up. All right, let's do this. I lied about the weather. It's 18 degrees Fahrenheit above zero. So Duff says that's tropical. We did have to put three quarts of transmission fluid in this thing because that's what we do around here. Three quarts to a gallon on every automatic transmission. I drove it out back here, let her warm up a bit. Says we got 40 pounds of oil pressure, temp sitting just below the middle, so in the operating range. Says we got a full tank of fuel, which uh, 12 volt battery, six volt gauges. I don't know how that works. Okay. We gotta go for a drive before this thing dies on us. Duff gets all wound up with this cold weather. Excited. Or maybe it's the mercury. We got brakes though. Could do a little dialing in on the uh, carburetor and tune up and such. Ignition, I don't know. I played with the timing a little bit, it seems better. Kinda wants to die. Seems like it idles fine, but. When you let off, it wants to die. We just saw the patrolman go that way, so we're gonna go that way. Even though this is like, by far, the most legal thing we've had in probably months. 1993, 2022. So first time on the road in 29 years. Come on, shift out of first gear. Second. I'm guessing that's all this thing's got is two speeds. Maybe it's a three. Drives down the road, 40 mile an hour, steering with my thumb, pretty good. Like I said, I had a 55 Ford with a Y block and a three speed overdrive. That thing cruised 80 on interstate all day long, no problem. I also had a 53 Ford with a small block and a nine inch. That thing was awesome to drive. Um, both of them were just lowered, just the, come on now. You go look out the window, let me cruise. Yeah, 55 mile an hour, one finger on the wheel, no vibrations that don't pull, don't shimmy. I dig it, I dig it. This would be a great project for somebody to, you know, clean up the interior, clean up the bright work, maybe lower it just a hair in the back, finish doing the 12-volt uh, conversion, or leave it 6 volts, I don't care. We got an appointment set up with boom tube to get some exhaust on it. Other than that, you know, that piece of glass is broke back there. We're cruising 65 mile an hour. We are doing the speed limit. It's a little noisy from the exhaust windows being down but you know 18 degrees we're gonna take it in we're gonna enjoy this weather Ralph the old Merc is pretty good seats in good shape headliners kind of almost respectable I mean it's like Barrett Jackson material compared to most of our stuff you are all about the pets today 
off, but when they work, these are great little engines. Uh, somebody's already done the spin on oil filter conversion, all new ignition, new radiator hoses, new uh, rebuilt carburetor. Starter seems fantastic. Fanny seems to shift fine. New brakes. Those aren't the kind of birds we want. Those are just Tweety Birds. Tweety Birds! Oh! There's, there's now probably a Tweety Bird stuck in the grill of the Mercury. Yeah, some uh, young guy or gal that needs a project or somebody with a young family because it's a four-door and got a back seat. This would be a real budget-friendly way to go. I don't know that you could buff the paint out. Chong would be impressed. This radiator did look a little bit green in this thing, so I would suggest you know getting that checked out, or probably just get a new one. I don't have good luck with used radiators. Ooh, throttle her back. We might we might be uh, stretching the speed limit there a little bit. This thing goes down the road good for uh, 95,000 miles. I'm sure that's original. No way this thing's got 195, and the speedometer works so. Definitely don't want to turn the radio or headlights on until we get the uh, 12 volt conversion fixed. Or maybe just leave it 6 volt. It seems like it starts good enough, so 6 volt will probably be just fine. Greased everything while I was underneath. Check the diff. That was full. Should be good to go. You could fly in and drive this thing home if we had an airport. Duff does not seem too concerned with keeping it, so this one will be available. Price and availability down below. Hit us up with an email, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. Tell you what, it's getting real close to the holidays, so if you would, you know, you got that special someone in your family or you want it, go click on the link in the merch section down below and get yourself some Mortgage merch so that Duff and I can have a Merry Christmas full of sandwiches and treats. Great stop, stocking stuffers, you know, get yourself shirts next level they're the ones to get we got hoodies in there for the cold weather maybe a super scraper i think i just sold my last ss1 this morning so i think we're supposed to get some more this week so maybe we'll have some of those great stocking stuffers the uh, super scrapers i don't know if we use them on this project probably on the carburetor deal uh, oh yeah this thing needs a fuel pump i did notice that max has some rebuild kits they specify them for flatheads and later y blocks so maybe this one could there's gotta be somebody out there that rebuilds these fuel pumps or maybe we can gut the parts out of this one and put into another one or vice versa to make this thing work because uh, I don't like clickety-clack fuel pumps but I guess it's working for now. But yeah, get yourself some Mortsky merch or hit us up for a super scraper and Mortsky repair at gmail.com. You know, for that special someone in your family. And uh, that way Duff and I can have a Merry Christmas and so can you. Or holidays. If we gotta say holidays, we can say holidays. Well, Duff, I think this thing will slide. It's really icy. You know, last week I think we had the snow truck and we were throwing mud. No, it's, uh, we ain't throwing mud today because she's uh, pretty hard out here. I don't know, this power glide, or not power glide, this two speed, I think here's some good ice. We'll see if we can throw her around. Ready, Duff, hang on. Oh, yeah. 
on the ice she does. Not very fast though. Well, there she came around. One more. Oh, that was a good one. We are definitely not going to be doing any burnouts though. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. We got a 1954 Mercury Monterey back on the road for the first time in 29 years. This car drives pretty dang good. I don't know that it's exactly roadworthy to drive across the country, but it's a lot better shape than most of the stuff we get. She still needs a couple of small things, like I said, a fuel pump, exhaust, which we got scheduled. I think I want to bring her down just a little bit in the rear, but probably won't happen because we're probably not going to keep this thing. There's definitely some rust repair opportunities and some interior upgrade opportunities, but mechanically this thing is pretty sound. Didn't take us a whole lot either. Some fluids, went through the ignition, get rid of some flexi hoses, fuel tank, brakes, the usual stuff. So, thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Mercury's are fun. Is this the first Mercury we had? Yeah, probably. All right, on to the next one. We do have a 74 Mercury here. Ugh, Uncle Buckwagon. All right, what are we gonna work on next?